Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day, everyone. My name is Carl Young, your registered migration agent. Today, I'd like to share with you on this video the SIV and PIV visas. Now, what do they stand for? SIV stands for Significant Investor uh, Visa, and PIV is Premium Investment Visa. Now, these are the top of the range within Australian immigration visa categories. It obviously, as it sounds, it actually uh, is the category to attract uh, VIP investors into Australia. Now, these two visas has one common um, criteria or conditions which a lot of investors love. It's the uh, the very, very minimal living requirements under this visa, which only requires a person who is the applicant uh, stays in Australia only for 40 days in a year, so 40 days, it's basically a summer and a winter vacation or holidays, and, and that, that, that was it. So there's no, unlike all the other 188A or 188B, where it requires at least to stay and live in Australia at least half of the year. Uh, basically, the law requires and make you to become a, a tax resident of Australia, but uh, uh, SIV and PIV would not have that sort of issues. So if you are a, uh, you know, a very successful business person, no matter where you are from, uh, this may be the right category of visa for you. So today I would like to take more times to actually getting to the immigration website and going through the criteria and legibilities and how it would work and how does it define uh, what they, that these, con um, the funds uh, requires to go into a certain uh, investments. So let me take you into the actual immigration webpage right now. Okay, so the first one obviously is the significant investor stream. So it's under one subclass 1AA, a business innovation investment provisional visa. So as you can see, it's a provisional. It doesn't give you a permanent residency straight away, but you do enjoy a lot of rights as a permanent, uh, like the permanent resident of Australia. Now, the the significant investor stream requires you to actually put your investments into the fund for at least four years. And uh, once that mature for four years, you are eligible to transfer into a permanent resident in Australia. Now, the eligibility, let's go through it first. Uh, you need to be nominated for sure. So you pick which state that you will seek to stay in the future. So some people like Gold Coast, some people like the beach, some people like Sydney, some people like the um, the um, the variety stuff that you can actually enjoy in Melbourne, and some people pick South Australia. So whichever you want, you need to go through that state government agency and get that applied. Now. Obviously, once that's done, there's a commitment to invest of $5 million. Now, how would that $5 million go? I have actual uh, graph uh, coming from Austria to actually uh, give you a better idea. So again, this is, uh, as what I said, it requires to be in there for at least four years. Uh, now, at least 500000 into a venture capital fund uh, and one5 into an approved management fund. And then uh, that goes into a merging company listed in Australian Stock Exchange. And the remaining balance of $3 million go to management fund, which can be in any sort of investments, uh, for example, commercial properties and things like that. Okay, so that's the $5 million. Now, not having history of involvement unacceptable activities, again, the applicant and, and the applicant's partner uh, cannot have any, um, for, for instance, um, fraudulent work, um, uh, previous record of filing bankruptcies and things like that, or um, having unlawful activity or business activities or dealings like money laundries, uh, that would not be acceptable. Have functional English. Now, uh, functional English is equal to IELTS 4.5. Now, 
a lot of these VIP businessmen won't even have time to actually take the test. So unless you will have a, a bachelor degree from uh, a, a West, a Western country like um, Australia, New Zealand, USA, UK or Canada, uh, or you re require to demonstrate um, you have at least study five years full time in English. Uh, otherwise, the other option is basically just pay for second installment. So primary applicant will be about nine thousand something dollars, and the uh, uh, secondary applicant will pay a lot, about half of that, so four and uh, four point five grand. Uh, then obviously you need to pass all the health and character checks, and um, uh, very importantly at the button here not have a visa cancel or previous application refused so uh, you might not be eligible if you have had any visa cancel or refused while you were in australia so uh, if you had any visa cancellation or refused histories obviously you need you are required to uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, that wasn't uh, you know an issue that could affect uh, the, the application here now very importantly, source of fund, you also re require to uh, demonstrate that the fund is coming from uh, a law is coming from a lawfully acquire assets. So it means it's already tax declared, tax paid, uh, it's clean, it's not something that it's you know coming from uh, well it's it this is actually required to uh, uh, proof uh, as a uh, under the international money anti money laundry law so the money has to be uh, you know lawfully acquired and whatever the tax required on the country has already been paid off so you claim it's it's actually personal income accumulated over the years or as a gift from um, you know whoever um, but Every country have different law. Some country actually require a gift required to be uh, declared and tax payable. Some country don't. So um, it's it's really depends on where you coming from. Okay. Now the second one is the premium investor stream. Now the only differences between SIV and PIV is here. Uh, obviously, you got to be nominated and receive an invitation to apply. The only differences is here. It's rather than five million dollars you are required to actually making comply comply premium investment at least 15 million dollars so off or obviously if you get that much it's a it's a better option uh, because you are not required to put such a fund into venture capital such a fund into uh, emerging uh, companies uh, it can all be um, invested into one fund uh, which you could actually maximize the potential of returns. For instance, real look at this real property in Australia, excluding uh, residential property. But obviously, fifty million dollars you won't put in residential. You will be put into commercial and um, you know earning on from the leasing and rental returns. It will be very very lucrative. Uh, so it's it's the only differences here, and also you're not required to have the to have the fund mature after four years before you, you can actually lodge to become a permanent resident. Now, if you do a PIV, if you're a PIV applicant, you're only required to have the fund invested in, in within one year. Now, once that one year mature, the invest might not even mature yet, but once you lapse that 12 month, you'll be eligible to lodge for a permanent residency. You, so you get permanent residence quicker, three years quicker than the SIV and rest of other requirement is the same. Now, finally, I would like to take you to the actual graph showing how this will all work. So it's a very complicated graph where, where they have a lot of words in there. Um, it's it's declared uh, as the um, it's required under the investment scheme. Otherwise, it would trigger a lot of uh, regulations and law, but easily to be um, to read this is if you look at the graph in the middle where that pi is it obviously explains that the 500k if you're a SIV 500k needs to go to VCPE so venture capital uh, fund okay and the uh, 1.5 million dollar need required to go to emerging companies here obviously it gives you a lot of description and detail in here but if you find the right fund management fund company they'll be able to manage all that together and professionally 
you do not require to do it yourself. You can, but you do not require to do it yourself. Um, if you need that sort of help, we can always facilitate. Now the balance obviously will be that $3 million will be right on the orange part of here. So that can be generally, you can, you can put in the real property and things like that. So at the top, left corner basically describes what SIV and PIV are. Now uh, also the uh, the left bottom will be PIV, uh, what is required. It's basically a duplicate of what we just uh, talked about. So today's video just to summarize, it's a very quick introduction and a brief explanation of what SIV and PIVs are. Now, if you are interested, uh, more than happy, you can contact me, or if you do have any further comments or questions, feel free to leave the comment down below. I'll be able to answer you in a timely manner. Finally, if you do like our video, I um, hope, hope you to uh, go to our uh, Facebook Facebook page and um, give us a thumbs up and also on our YouTube channel remember to uh, subscribe so you can get more Australian visa insights and obviously with the little bell at the, at the side if you tick it once we have the newest information we'll publish and you will get it at the first uh, moment then anyway today's video is all here um, I shall see you in our next video Thank you. Goodbye.